Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, things look like they could be starting to heat up. I don't want to get, you know, too ahead of myself just yet, but there's a couple of very, very interesting stories that we'll get onto shortly. And the market has done something that, uh, well, the BTC chart anyway is showing something that looked somewhat positive, and we'll get to that shortly. But let's just have a look at the market at the moment, a bit of an overview. All right, 1.474 trillion. So. You know, again, getting oh so close to that $1.5 trillion mark again. We did get down to, I think, about $1.1, $1.2 trillion for a while there. But in saying that, only, you know, two or three months ago, we were at like $2.7 trillion. So we're still sort of halfway. But look, market up 4.8%. It is Friday, uh, stateside time. It's obviously uh, Saturday evening sort of here. So maybe sort of Saturday morning stateside time. So, uh, sorry, Friday uh, for the stateside time, so we'll have to wait to see is there further sort of downside. So yeah, they could be getting to almost Saturday morning, but again, we'll see. Look, Bitcoin dominance again dropping, so now under 44%. Means people are starting to get bullish on the altcoins again. ETH dominance rising, and something uh, that we'll get to very shortly makes me super glad that I really collected uh, some ETH and held on to it. And look, gas price is 10, which is really, really good as well, super cheap. All right, so let's have a look. It looks like a sea of green, and it's so funny. These seven days can just change overnight by what happens on this 24-hour mark because what you got to remember is the other day this was red, and then it was green the day before, and then it was red the day before that. So we really do have a market that's just all over the place at the moment. It just keeps fluctuating up, down, up, down, up, down. All right, 24 hours is looking good, particularly for Ethereum. Have a look at that, 20%, 6%, and still rising. All right, what's been the biggest movers, though, in the last 24 hours? What's done well in the top 100? So Quant, Compound, Nexo, The Graph, nice. Uh, XDC, Cosmos having a nice uh, boost there. Nicely done. Aave, Neo, Synthetics, Network Token. Look, a ton of really nice projects. Solana, yeah, some pretty good gains there, you know. Really 15% and above, as I say, is what I call a really good gain. Anything under it is just what we call kind of average, really, for crypto in a bull market and not in a bear market. I mean, in a bear market, you take any kind of any kind of gain you can get. But look, things not looking too uh, bad there at all. Pretty good for some projects. But, you know, were there any projects that were hit pretty bad in the top 100? No, not really. So Bitcoin Cash uh, down a little bit. I can't believe $31. Good Lord, that's unbelievable. Well, Bitcoin Cash, ABC, I don't know if that's the same Bitcoin Cash that I remember. I've really not paid any attention to it. But if so, that was around three, dollars $4,000 once to be now down at $31. Wow. Thorchain, a little bit uh, of a gain there. So really, there was one loss and it was that Bitcoin Cash, ABC. So I, I think that's the fork of the Bitcoin Cash, actually. That's not Bitcoin Cash. So there you go. And then look, we're just into the stable coins. And the reason they're down a little bit is because people are moving out of the stable coins and getting back into the altcoins. And that showed, uh, again, by just the gains, you can see, like it's just gain, 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 gain. There's probably nothing that uh, didn't really do too well there. All right, this is what I found interesting about the Bitcoin chart. As I was speaking about this yesterday, I said this was that, you know, downward trend. We had a fake out and then we fell above. We looked like we were going to uh, breach over it and we wicked over it, but then we rejected. And now look what we've done though. We've broke out. We have now used it as support. We haven't done that before. It's just been going down. I mean, you know, you could say this was almost support, but really it just fell through. It was more resistance than anything. So now we're holding the support. So is this going to be a weekend where we break out? Oh, that's what worries me because it's a weekend. Generally, if there is a, you know, a breakout on a weekend, there's going to be a CME gap that gets formed and we generally come back and close them. Not always, but 90, I think, 5 plus percent of the time they get closed. So we'll wait and see whether this can sort of hold, particularly sort of comes uh, Monday Australia time, sort of, you know, Sunday stateside time. Is this now going to be support? Are we going to stay above this downwards trending line or are we going to drop back below it? That is the question. But there's some really, really bullish stuff sort of uh, for us to look at. So this is very, very interesting. So Bitcoin and Ethereum supply 
is dropping on major crypto exchanges. Changing tide favours bulls, says our sentiment. And they do a lot of analysis on uh, exchanges and, you know, the flows in and out and things like that. So we go here. Now, uh, Ethereum holders continue to make history by lowering the percent of ETH held on exchanges to the lowest ratio since November 2018. The lowest, so it means ETH has been taken off and continues to be taken off. Excuse me, that says to me, I think ETH is getting ready to explode. It's going to go haywire in this you know, next part of this market. Very, very interesting. But here I found what was more interesting was it says their whale tracking data indicates that ETH whale addresses holding 10 plus thousand coins now hold 70% or more of the supply for the first time since December 2017. So it says the big boys are here and they were really, you know, loading up on ETH. So obviously very, very bullish for Ethereum, but also a worry that 70% of all the ETH out there is now held by the big boys. So that says to me, you know, hold on for dear life because things are going to get crazy. And, you know, if the big guys are here, how long will they stay here? How much will they hold will be the next question. But it does make me think that I'm super glad, yeah, I bought, you know, ETH and held on to it. And last but not least, for the first time in crypto history, ETH addresses... Acti sorry, ETH addresses activity is above Bitcoin's address activity as the prices have soared back to 2100. We're now it's 2200. So that says to me that not only are the big boys here and really into ETH, even retail has. Retail has jumped on board and they're all over ETH at the moment because it's now outperforming Bitcoin. Oh, people have talked about the flipping before. I get the feeling like we're probably going to see it. I think Ethereum will flip Bitcoin in this cycle. Not for, you know, like forever. I just think the hype will get really, really big behind Ethereum and Bitcoin and other altcoins. And we got another altcoin to look at where I think it's looking very promising. Even though the prices have been, you know, sort of down and, you know, not doing too much and there is still that possibility that we go lower, I am feeling very bullish at the moment. That's all I can say. Very, very bullish. All right. A Dogecoin metaverse launches tomorrow and it's giving away 1 million Doge. A weird and wacky augmented reality Dogecoin game event kicks off tomorrow. So the million Doge disco event kicks off tomorrow. So it's participants and it's using your phone. It can be in an augmented reality game. Will be awarded with NFTs and receive free Dogecoin. And how about this for a kicker? Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's half-brother is behind the event. So basically you log on with your phone and it's like a disco kind of thing. You know, the whole metaverse kind of space. And they're giving away free Doge and NFTs as well. So if you're into Doge, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a Doge sort of fan. Like I've bought it before and sold it before and things like that. But look, it has really taken off. And, you know, maybe this is, again, just another sign that Again, you know, the community has decided Doge is real. And <laughs> again, that's not me saying it, but maybe, yeah, the community has decided. All right, so not a whole lot of news, but this is very, very interesting. So over $30 billion worth of ADA is now staked. So hodlers grow bullish over the possibilities that come with the network's most recent update. So ADA, the cryptocurrency fueling the Cardano blockchain, now has over $30 billion dollars worth staked on the network now that's over 70 percent of all their tokens all the circulating supply uh, being staked making cardano the most capitalized blockchain by stake value with ethereum in a distant second at 12 billion so not even half the amount Oof. again that makes me quite bullish about cardano but here's the kicker Grayscale announced it has purchased Cardano, which is now the third largest holding in its large cap crypto fund. Now, don't get me wrong, they got a ton more Bitcoin and even a whole lot more Ethereum, but finally Grayscale have got on board and it shows that there is institutional interest. People want to buy this stuff. And again, we were just talking over here, like Bitcoin, you know, 10,000 plus coins, that's the big players and institutions. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I get the feeling 
like we don't have too much longer before this market really starts to fire off. Now, again, not financial advice. I never give you financial advice, and I'm definitely not saying it couldn't go lower. We could have one more big shakeout to try and, again, get rid of you know anyone who's not like a true believer, because that's what it'll come down to. If you're a true believer, it won't matter what happens to the price. You're just simply going to hold, and you're going to continue to buy more. If people aren't true believers and they were just here to try and again, you know, chuck a few dollars in and make millions, you know, overnight, they're not going to hang around. They won't be able to handle the downside. And that's what the big players are going to get rid of before they then let it go. So look, that's it for me. I am feeling quite optimistic at the moment, but look, I've felt really optimistic before and the market's turned and gone the complete other way. So that is possible. I keep that in mind. But as I've said before, Look, if prices continue to go down, I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging in. And again, if it's really going down, then it's going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum that I'm really going to focus on. But if it's just kind of flip-flopping about, then you can start to look at the altcoins because it does get the feeling like they're making a bit of a comeback. But just be very careful. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice. I'm not putting too much into altcoins at all at the moment. It's not that I haven't put any in but just little bits here and there, mainly Bitcoin and then Ethereum. But I mean, look, look at this over the last seven days. It's pretty hard to say that maybe things haven't changed. I mean, look at this. People have, you know, got right back into internet computer. This got down to $30. I think it was less. It might have got down to twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Definitely $30 not that long ago. Look, 47% in the last seven days. And the scary thing is this was like three, $400. So... Yeah, internet computer may not be done for yet, but obviously the very early investors they dumped the absolute crap out of it. Went to three when it went to three and four hundred dollars, uh, and you know maybe they're buying back in. Who knows? But things are looking quite nice, quite nice. But that's what makes me slightly nervous at the moment. But anyway, look, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good, and I'll see you next time.